young clay shot Brody Willard is down south to learn that way of the crow. Oh, Crowology, if you will. Been shooting three times with me this week. He's already telling me how to put my eye up. He's dedicating a couple of weeks of his school holiday to absorb as many crowisms and as much crow ability as he can. And we're sure he's been well looked after. I've slept in a cupboard all week, under the sink. <laughs> Bother learn. Um, keep blowing the hide, keep down, get in all the corners, do the Andy Crow lean, right down low, shoot uh, as crosses. Crow heads off with his UK shoot warehouse chopper into the woods. It's unbelievable. This thing needs a government help on, I tell you. I wish I had one years ago. It's quite a tool. Deforestation is now a major problem in this part of Kent. Shooting on a bit of rape stubble today. Got young Brodie Woolard here. Three times world champion at Tiddlywinks. Um, he's down here for the week, or he was only going to be here for a week. He's uh, eating us out of house and home. I think he's got worms. His dad's, his dad's brought him a load more food down today because he's decided, uh, he's invited himself to stay another week. But he was talking to his dad earlier, it sounds like he might be down here for another two weeks. Uh, um, but yeah, he's down here today. We've got a rape stubble here. We really wanted to shoot it on Thursday, that's when we was planning to shoot it. But it rained all day Wednesday, rained all day Thursday, rained on, th on Friday. So we haven't been able to shoot it. Um, as soon as the rape starts germinating, they tend to leave it. There is a, it's quite a good flight line through here. So I said to him we was going to shoot it today, so we get 20 or 30 pigeons, we'll be happy. Awesome. Um, well, he don't need a lot of teaching, he's a good shot. He struggles a bit with uh, anything that's like diving and twisting, straight line stuff, no problem at all. But diving and twisting, coming into decoys, and when they, sh they see you and shy off, Struggles a little bit with them. I'll try and hopefully, if a few come in today, um, hopefully they'll do all right. So the wind's not ideal; it's coming into our face. So what we've done? I've got a whirly over here on the left-hand side of the hide. I've got a, a small pattern there. I've got a small pattern there. Hopefully the birds are going to funnel round, see the decoys, come back round, and come back through here, and hopefully come through this gap here. We might have to have a fiddle about once we get going, um, but we'll have to see. I might have to take the rotary in and put a flapper out. We'll have to see. We might go back to old school. Um, but that's the plan at the moment. We've made a bale hide out in the middle of the field. It's a narrow field. The pigeons fly down that shore, down this row of poplars. So at least then we can reach the poplars and we can't quite reach the tree line, but we can get three quarters of the way there. So the plan is anything coming down through here, we should be able to intercept it. If they don't come into the decoys, hopefully we'll be able to shoot it. I've got my young sidekick here, Brody Woolard, and he's going to show me how to shoot them. Hopefully. Four times world champion at Tiddlywinks. Having the hide in the centre of the field means they can shoot in all directions instead of having a back to a hedge. Andy wants both him and Brody to get some shooting. Alright. a lovely shot that was. I think there was a lean in there, wasn't there? I was watching. I was on the phone, but I was watching. There was a slight lean there. Um, it seemed to have worked anyway. Now, that's where a lot of people go wrong, they, they don't get down below the high, you've got to get right down and but be ready when you come up for them. So, if we carry on how we are, we're 100% at the moment, so, um, yeah, if it keeps going like this, just plodding away at them like this, we keep poking away at them, we should have half these bag. They might dry out later on, but it's usually after lunch they start coming. Settled in the hide, we see that Brody has adopted the crouching crow. So what else has he been doing this week? I've done a bit of combining with Andy, sat next to him while combining, been in the tractor. Before this, I hadn't been in a tractor or a combine, so that's new things. He's also emptied my freezer of food as well. Boy, this boy, this boy can eat. <laughs> Rabbiting, crows. crows, yeah, Damn. maybe a bit more decoying, yeah, stalking. stalking, yep, and hopefully some other cool stuff. Quite a trip for Brody, but these days he's getting some international travel under his belt, competing in Italy a few weeks ago. My life competition was the English English Sporting World Cup in Italy, and that that went great really. I come home happy, won a gold medal, uh, first in juniors which is under 21 and I won a hunting trip to Romania which which that was good 
I'm, I'm not sure about the full details about the hunting trip, but because it's all in Italian, so I'm not sure what that's about yet. But the people who I shot against, they were massive. I'm, I'm, I'm still smaller than I'm standing on the podium. <laughs> The Brodie and Crow combo enjoys some good shooting. Some birds decoy, but many are following the line of the field. Cabbage. What do you mean, cabbage? Uh, I'll tell you where we're having some fun Down here. South. Down south. here we go. He's starting to make it out of my accent. I'll tell you we're having some fun here. We're not shooting a lot of pigeons, but there ain't nothing getting past us, which is good. They're coming like I said they would. They come round behind and come through this corner, so... Um, John get a pattern out there to try and draw, it'd be nice to try and draw them over top. There's plenty for the birds to feed on at the moment and Crow checks out a couple of crops. This one that Brody's just shot. The one that missed. There you go. That's one pigeon, hasn't got a crop full. Where I was yesterday, there was up to three and a half, four thousand pigeons feeding on a field of peas. And what you've got to realise, every time a pigeon opens a one of the pods, there's seven to eight peas in each pod. It'll open the pod to get one pea out. As soon as it opens the pod up, the other, other seven fall out. So there's seven, there's seven more on the floor underneath the standing crop. This other one is full of wheat. Certainly not my wheat, that's a bit shriveled and horrible. Crow picks up on something Brody needs to work on, indecision. He had a perfectly good pigeon there and he was following it. Could have killed it, no trouble at all. They caught out the corner of his eye another one, but the other one that he come back onto was a stock dove. And by the time he realised that, he come back onto the pigeon. He, he couldn't get onto it. And like I, I said to him yesterday, and I said to him today, once you're on a bird, stay on it. If there's anything else in, in the corner of your eye, forget that. Always stay on the bird you're on. And uh, he wasn't listening yesterday. Listen, Brody. The bag builds nicely, and Brody's father, who's further down the farm, clocks up 75 for the day. Brody and Crow get 106, and Brody just keeps on learning. Although not everything is appropriate for an impressionable teenager. I wish I was as good as Andy Crow. Oh, perfect.